all right and we are back yeah uh, an aussie open video out of me was long overdue i never really got around to previewing this tournament as well as the tournaments that were the lead up to it or really making any predictions for this year so i'm gonna do my very best to cram a lot of that in into this video i did make a week one reaction video but i didn't roll it out in time i felt so again we're going to try cramming in a lot into this particular video but without further ado let's just hop right into it i can't start this off any other way than talking about your now nine time australian open champion novak djokovic i mean what can you say if if not for Nadal being a mutant at the French Open, this has to be one of the great achievements in, in our sport. He's now gone beyond anything barring really Nadal at the French Open. And it's absolutely unbelievable that we could feasibly and probably at this point likely have two guys that won 10 of one major by the ends of their careers with Djokovic in Australia now looking good to do what Rafa did at the French Open in 2017 which is win 10 there that aside let's let's just talk about the performance in the final this was really consistent with what we've come to expect with Djokovic in major finals, especially in this later prime part of his career. The guy totally seemed to have mastered his nerves at this point in his career. So many of these finals, you can look at him and he comes out of the gates so strong to where you can't afford to be nervous as an opponent because if there are any nerves and if you're off he's been so quick to take full advantage of that and if you let him get out to starts like this it can turn into a real uphill battle just look no further than the last three australian open finals he's played prior to this one now it did look like he was off to one of those awesome starts just like a year ago but like a year ago his opponent was able to get it together, get back even in the set with Medvedev breaking, I believe, at 3-1 after he went down 3-0 early. And from that point, this was really the only competitive set of the match. But after that 3-0 start, that first set was really even and Medvedev did end up having a couple of openings late in that set. I can't remember the details exactly, but at 4-all, I'm pretty sure. Just a couple of uncharacteristic, unforced errors. And that was a theme throughout this match. Djokovic didn't really give him that many breakpoint chances or looks, but the openings were there. He was putting somewhat of a semblance of pressure on Djokovic's serve, but a lot of what Medvedev has been successful with in this matchup against this older version of Djokovic has been really beating him at his own game and outlasting him and wearing him down by willing to get into these long grueling points with him the way that Djokovic has really had the upper hand with pretty much everyone else throughout his career but now with this older version of him he does seem to get fatigued more easily and Medvedev has really taken advantage of that in their prior matchups where he's had success. What was really surprising though was that we really saw none of that in this match even when Medvedev was hanging in there in the first set it went pretty quickly for a 7-5 set, especially one between these two. There weren't that many extended rallies and he really was missing a lot more than you're accustomed to. And I think what Djokovic did differently in this was keep a lot of balls in the middle of the court and not try to just slap 50-60 winners past Medvedev and that's really what Medvedev usually wants you to do against him and 
Novak didn't really play into his hands that way this time around, and he really took advantage of his variety advantage in this matchup. In this particular match, a lot of short slices, drop shots, trying to bring Medvedev in, coming to net and being effective himself. But ultimately, I think playing deep down the middle was the biggest breakthrough Novak made in trying to create a blueprint to beat Medvedev because while I do think that Medvedev had an off day just playing him this way making him be the instigator it's really what forced him into making so many of those uncharacteristic misses we saw from him throughout this match since I don't think that he was ready to be the aggressor in this match and Djokovic forced him to be and that really resulted in him pressing at times in this match. Of course, I would be ignorant to not talk about Djokovic's serve throughout this tournament. This is, I think without a doubt, the best I have ever seen this guy serve. And that's really scary considering there's several points in time over the last decade where we have said that same thing, but yet, He's hitting his spots and he's hitting his serve harder than ever pretty much throughout this tournament where I'm pretty sure he had his highest ace count in a slam by far and set his career high in aces. I'm pretty sure went over the 20 ace mark multiple times too and that is a scary sight for anybody on the tour since this is only going to help him in extending his career and in this tournament alone you saw it get him out of trouble several times when his ground game was hampered by the oblique injury he was still able to find a lot of big serves when he needed them and if this ends up being sustainable it is quite the scary sight of course on the other end it was an all-time returning performance from Djokovic. It was one of those matches that really showcased why this guy is the best returner of all time. And look no further than that 5-6 game in, in the first set. That was a game that I thought Djokovic won literally single-handedly off of his return. It's not really like Medvedev had a bad serving day. He was hitting a lot of his spots, but that 5-6 game in the first set was pretty much a microcosm of how well Novak was returning, and it was just suffocating. That 5-6 game, I'm pretty sure Medvedev was making pretty much all his first serves in that game, and Djokovic just reflexed so many of them back and got them back deep. Which is really a tale as old as time, I mean, so many times he just lays out and reflexes these balls back deep and probably the best examples of those at Love 30, he throws himself at a ball that literally nobody else is getting back into the court and he just floats it high and yes, Medvedev probably should have done a better job on his swinging volley but it set Djokovic up for a good pass after it hit the tape but just giving yourself those opportunities nobody else is putting that ball back into play and then on set point again a lot of people aren't putting this ball back into into the court but Djokovic looked wrong-footed but he still laid out and floated this ball back incomprehensibly deep and it'll show up as an unforced third that Medvedev netted a forehand on the third ball, but the guy's returning is just such a ridiculous asset, and it just has to put so much pressure on you mentally to continually have the point basically reset to neutral in what would be winning positions against pretty much anyone else. It just has to weigh on you, and that was one of those moments. From that point on, I think that we could label Daniel Medvedev's showing as a bit disappointing. He, in all likelihood, probably never had a chance to win this match from that point on. But still, um, it, it seemed like he crumbled a little bit from that point up until pretty much 
midway through that third set and this was even in spite of Djokovic donating him a break in the opening game of the second but still from losing the first set till midway through the third he had a lapse that you just can't have against Djokovic on this court and probably in general but especially on this court and Novak was just running downhill pretty much from the from the first set on when we got to the third where Medvedev started having somewhat of a second wind after he went down a break in the third it was it was too late Djokovic was already pretty much in a runaway freight train type of mood Medvedev was giving everything he had in that 2-4 game where Djokovic was serving and just a couple of vintage Djokovic defensive points which definitely had to be deflating with Medvedev pretty much giving his last ditch effort in that game and Djokovic would close in the very next game with some more spectacular returning and ironically enough a hook shot smash winner on match point despite the smash probably being the consistently worst shot he'd played throughout that final he closed in spectacular fashion with one of those skyhook smashes for a winner and ultimately extend his australian open record to nine titles and Overall major haul to 18. I think this was a massive legacy slam for Djokovic with how many unlucky breaks he'd caught over the past year. He was the favorite at Wimbledon. He didn't get to play that last year. Um, he was again the favorite at the US Open and unfortunately self-inflicted there, um, was defaulted and then got, got throttled by Rafa at the French so it was really important I think that he had to hold serve here in in Australia where it's his house and regardless of the circumstances was where he'd last won a slam and with this win he puts the pressure right back on Rafa Nadal to do the same in Paris and avoids a, a drought potentially after not winning a slam since the Australian Open a year ago. So yeah, he's, he's right back in business in that slam race. Real quick though, before I move on, just for a quick minute, I obviously can't talk about this tournament without addressing the elephant in the room of the injury Novak Djokovic sustained throughout this tournament. There was a lot of backlash and skepticism of the legitimacy of this injury and I did get to see actually the two and a half sets pretty much of that match where he first got injured against Taylor Fritz and from what I saw I, I don't see how anyone can say that he was never injured in this tournament because the way he played in that match down the stretch even in the fifth set was clearly a guy that was hampered and I don't think really looked anywhere near a hundred percent even through his next two matches against Raonic and Sasha Zverev that in the addition of it not making any sense at all for him to just fake this injury up to such a love against Fritz in a match where he probably would have been out of there in half an hour had he not gotten injured at all. At the time of me recording, I think that we've learned from him that he did indeed have a tear that got bigger as the tournament wore on, and that does seem more severe than it appeared, especially in those last two rounds, but I've never really liked people sort of telling pro athletes if they're injured or not just based on what they're seeing in their performance on court or on the field 
We have no way of knowing at the end of the day, only they do, so you have to give them the benefit of the doubt. Accusations of faking injuries isn't anything new to me, of course, being a Rafa Nadal fan. I mean, that's been thrown at, at Rafa throughout his career, so... At the end of the day, I think that Djokovic deserves the benefit of the doubt. I think at several points in this tournament, you could tell he wasn't 100%. And that's pretty much all I have to say on that. At the end of the day, just a fabulous fortnight again by Novak Djokovic in Melbourne. And big picture, just the latest example of the big three saying no in a major final, which appears to be the last piece of territory that still belongs to them and only them. I came into this tournament picking Djokovic to win, but as the tournament progressed, I was honestly leaning Medvedev going into this final, but there was part of me that was like, I have to see Djokovic lose a final in Melbourne before I actually pick it happening. But honestly, I thought we were in for a great match and I objectively thought that Medvedev had a case here going into the final to be favored to win his first slam, and after he played the way he did in his first slam final in New York, as well as the two streaks he's gone on in 2019 and late 2020 to early 2021 in this final, I thought that you could separate Medvedev from the rest of his next generation peers as one that stood out and one that you could really have faith in. But don't get me wrong, Djokovic was excellent and had a lot to do with how Medvedev fell flat on his face in this final. But it was disappointing on, on Medvedev's end how he fared. And it's really led me to the conclusion that I can't really buy into any of these guys until I actually see one of them beat a big three member in the final of a major. Yeah, that's a high bar to hold them to, but that is clearly their next step because at the moment, despite them challenging everywhere else, that's what matters the most and the big three still have a pretty comfortable stranglehold still at the back end of the four biggest tournaments in the world. Anyway, I think I'm going to talk more about that in another video. At the end of the day, this one is to celebrate Novak Djokovic. If you needed any more evidence, this just is the cherry on top that that man is the greatest hardcore player who ever played this game. And certainly the claims for him as the greatest player of all time will be reignited following this, deservedly so. He's always been in that conversation, but you know, as we do after every major that a new member of the Big Three wins, that's the one that we tend to give the GOAT bandwagon to, so... It'll be fun seeing what the future holds for Novak Djokovic with this injury and... After Miami, clay season coming up, Roger Federer's return in Doha and Dubai, but regardless, another fabulous start to the new year with something that's all too familiar with a Novak Djokovic victory down under. Thanks for watching, please like, comment, and sub here, and I will see you all in the next one.